Hey everybody, this is Angel. I wanted you to see my face before we get started. So I'm about to put a PowerPoint on and we're going to talk about wallet, wallet friendly wellness. So here we go. Let me um, share my screen with you. And here we go. So today we are going to be talking about wallet friendly wellness. We're going to get you some um, healthy food without spending so much for your diet and your um, budget. So um, I'm just so you know, I am not a medical doctor nor a psychiatrist. The views of this workshop are my own and make sure you don't change any supplements without talking to your doctor. Um, and it's not been evaluated by the FDA. But who am I? Well, I am Angel and I have more than a dozen years in alternative health. I've served about 7,000 clients through the years and I have my nature naturopathy degree and my holistic nutrition degree. You can check out all my degrees and certifications on LinkedIn. And I am the founder of the online program, Alternative Health with Angel. So our agenda today is we're going to talk about food, household items, personal care, and strategy and planning you can do to be as well as you can, but also save some money. So general guidelines here, um, when you're trying to pick food and you're saying, okay, the organic's so expensive, what you're looking at is if you eat the skin, for instance, an apple, you want to consider that organic. You want to, as much as possible, try to buy any vegetables or fruits that you eat the skin organically. If you don't eat the skin, like an avocado, then conventional is okay. Now, organically grown crops have more antioxidants and vitamins. However, if we're trying to save money, you know, we're wanting definitely less pesticides in our food. So you kind of want to go with this general guideline. Now, frozen is not bad. A lot of people think, oh, I shouldn't eat frozen food. Ideally, we'd like to get fresh first, then frozen, then canned. But you want to keep some general guidelines in mind for that as well. Um, frozen produce has more nutrients than fresh sometimes, um, as it's typically picked right at the peak of freshness. Um, but some nutrients are lost during processing. So it kind of goes back and forth there. But frozen lasts longer than fresh, particularly if you have a big family. <laughs> um, if you're buying canned, you want to look for a BPA-free line. And you want to go organic with canned for sure. You really want to do that. Now, something I do when I have canned vegetables is I actually take them out of the can. I put them in a strainer and I wash them off. And then I put them in the um, pot to cook with some broth that way. And I usually use organic broth. So that way I've gotten whatever's on them off a little bit and we can keep going from there. Um, so when it comes to the dirty dozen, this is something that's put out by the environmental working group. And they look at this every year. They put out new groups every year. And what they're looking at is what is the worst um, vegetables and fruits out there for pesticides and things like that. And so this year, this is the dirty dozen. We got strawberries and spinach and kale and peaches and pears and nectarines. And you can read all of those there if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. But the interesting thing about all these, if you notice, is you eat the skin. So remember, that is definitely, if you can't remember this list when you're at the grocery store, just remember if you're eating the skin, you want to be careful with that. Now, they also come out with what they call the Clean 15. So these are things that you can pretty much buy, not worry at all about having pesticides and um, you can get them conventionally, so they're not going to be nearly as much. So like some of those eating the skin things are different here. So like corn, they feel okay with, which I'm surprised because usually corn has some GMO. So we'll see how that goes through the years. But avocados, pineapples, asparagus, things like that. So keeping a picture of this and that last one on your phone would really helpful when you're at the grocery store. And if you need this again, it's on Environmental Working Group. They are the ones who put this list together every year. They're a great resource. Now, when it comes to household items like laundry, kitchen, bathroom, you really want to try to do it yourself if you can. Um, and if you're buying it, stay away from dyes and fragrances. These synthetic chemicals um, interfere with our hormones and our endocrine system and cause all kinds of problems, particularly if you're trying to get pregnant. And you don't want to use air fresheners or anything that puts synthetic fragrance into the air. So those things that plug in the wall, you do not want those. Here's some recipes, something else you can take a picture of here. Um, I use these all the time, this tub cleaner. I actually put that in first into my tub and then I put the scouring powder on top and then I scrub it. Together, they act like a soft scrub, I would say, and phenomenal results. I haven't had any problems, much cheaper and much cleaner as far as our environment and our health is concerned on this one. And um, depending on how many tubs you have, I only have two tubs. So this scouring powder actually lasts me two rounds of cleaning my bathroom instead of just one, which is nice.
Um, on the personal care deodorant and shampoo, you want to think about the fragrance rule on this as well. And you definitely want to avoid aluminum and deodorant. Um, I do hair mineral tissue analysis. And one of the things we see in that is heavy metals in people's hair. And I see a lot of aluminum in people's hair and it's because of the deodorant. So you really want to be careful with that. Again, the environmental working group, they're at ewg.org. They're phenomenal for helping you find um, products that are really healthy for you and aren't going to cause any problems. And they have a really easy system too, like it's red, yellow, green. So you know exactly what you should get. Now, some strategies that I like to put into place to save some money is I actually have boards set up on my Pinterest and I, they're for like breakfast, lunch, workouts, cleaning, whatever you want to put them to make the boards. But anytime I find cleaning recipes, workout recipes, <laughs> yeah, workout recipes, breakfast, lunch, anything, I throw them on the Pinterest page. And so once a week, I go and look through Pinterest and say, okay, what are we going to be eating this week? Of course, I ask people in the family what they want too. But you can use a spreadsheet to, spreadsheet to keep a list of your most ordered grocery items. You can inventory those before you go grocery shopping. Um, you can look through the Pinterest list to find new items that you want to eat. So all this prep beforehand saves time when you're actually in the grocery store. Because if you go in without a plan, you're going to buy all kinds of stuff you don't need. But if you can go in and say, these are the, the staples I normally need this week. This is the recipes I'm using this week. It makes it a lot cheaper and you save a lot of time. Um, some other things I do to plan. Um, so one day before the grocery shop, and I actually look at that Pinterest and plan my meals out for the week. Um, I use an app called AnyList, but you can really use any app, but it basically records which groceries I need from which retailer. So I mainly shop at Publix and Target. And so I just have a list for Target and a list for Publix. And I just put things in there that I get in from each of those. And that, again, it gives me a list of the grocery store. I don't have to rely on my brain. Um, and I place as many grocery pickup orders as I can. So like at Target, before I go, I place the order. So they just bring it to my trunk. That saves me a lot of money because I'm not picking up things I wouldn't normally pick up in Target or Publix. Now, um, Target and Walmart both offer this service for free. So I highly recommend it. Uh, Publix and Aldi are currently charging for it. Uh, hopefully that changed by the time you watch this, but um, they're not cheap. So you have to pay for that. So you want to do it with the ones that it's free so you can save some money. And it's really easy sitting there. Um, shopping on your app. It makes life so much easier. And you can show things to people who aren't going to be at the grocery store with you. Is this what you want? Is that what you want? That kind of thing. Now, something else you want to do when you're shopping and when you're actually going in the shortest stop is you want to eat some protein before you go. Okay. That's going to help balance your blood sugars. And we're going to talk about that in a second. It's also good to stick to the list. Like I talked about earlier. Um, stay on the outside of that grocery store. You know, I'm sure you've heard, don't get on the inside. I pop in and out on the inside occasionally. I'll grab something frozen occasionally. Um, but you want to really be careful with getting in and out. You want to time your groceries so that you're not buying too much and you're not hungry when you go. So what happens when you don't have protein before you grocery shop is you have these bud sugar roller coasters. And I know you know what that feels like. Basically hangry, we have a word for it. And you're going to make really poor decisions while you're in the grocery store. In fact, you'll make really poor decisions anytime you're hangry. So you really want to make sure to get that protein before you go in, maybe um, some peanut butter or something like that to really kind of help level out those blood sugars so you don't make poor decisions when you're at the grocery store. So I am a big fan of balancing your blood sugar every day, not just when you're at the grocery store. So I'm a big fan of getting that 15 to 30 grams of protein in the morning for your first meal of the day. And even if you um, intermittent fast, it doesn't matter when you eat that meal. I just want you to make sure you get that protein with that first meal of the day. You're also going to want to avoid liquid sugar. Something I see when I'm in, I do have to go into Target. I'll see people at the Starbucks and Target buying all these sugary drinks and then walking around Target. That is causing that roller coaster that we just looked at. So you want to avoid those liquid sugars, sweet tea, soda, ice cream, sports drinks. Be really careful with those. If you're someone who's looking to lower your sugar um, intake, liquid sugars are the best place to start for that. And it's a great way to save money helps you make more rational decisions. And that is whether we're talking about at the grocery store or doing your checkbook, you know, balancing your checkbook, things like that. You want to be able to make rational decisions. 
And I want to make a quick note about coffee. We were just talking about with the sugar. Um, it can be a liquid sugar if you drink coffee um, with a lot of sugar in it, which a lot of people do. So be real careful with that. You also want to be careful about drinking coffee alone because it raises blood sugar. So you want to eat a little bit of pr um, protein, a bit of fat to keep that insulin spike lower. Some people put like butter in their coffee. You've probably heard of that. So there's different ways you can do that. But you definitely want to make sure you lower that spike from coffee when you're drinking it without any food. Now, this is my hormone heaven framework. I actually work for minerals. Minerals are kind of the spark plug for our hormones. And so I get your minerals balanced. I was talking about that earlier through hair tissue mineral analysis. That way we see where your minerals are and also see where your heavy metals are. What's nice about hair tissue mineral analysis is it's better than blood of finding exactly where your minerals are. So we can get a really good um, take on where they're at. We can fix those. And then from there, we work on the hormone hierarchy of cortisol, insulin, thyroid and stress, sex hormones. So cortisol is what our adrenals produce. So our adrenals need lots of good energy in the morning. And then they kind of fall off through the day that cortisol does. And that's that natural kind of framework we want to see happening with the cortisol. Most people, unfortunately don't have that though. So that's the next thing I work on. And then we work on insulin. Pretty much everybody knows about blood sugar, but they don't know how to fix that. So that's something we definitely work on. And then from there, we go to the thyroid. We talk about um, all the components of the thyroid that you should have checked. Um, the correct functional numbers to look at when you get them checked. And then finally, I help you um, balance those sex hormones. But we have to balance all these other things first before we can even get to those sex hormones. So how can I help you? Well, I have an alternative health membership. It includes private coaching calls, that hair tissue mineral analysis we discussed earlier, my hormone heaven framework work that we personalize just to you. It gives you text availability and discounted supplements and functional testing. And that all starts at just $7 a day. Um, I have monthly payments and financing available as well on that. And if that's something you're interested in, you can go to alternativehealthwithangel.com and apply to work with me. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at Alt Health Angel, and you can find me on LinkedIn as well. If you have any questions from this video, I hope that you come and find me and ask them. And if you're interested in the membership, I'd love to hear from you too. Next time you're at the grocery store, make sure you eat before you go, take a list with you and save some money. And remember the general rule, it's not always really, really accurate, but the general rule is if you eat the skin, you you want to get it organic. Okay. So thank you everyone for listening and uh, we will talk to you later. Thank you.